feels like you got a lot to do as you, when you get here the first time in a few years for you. I guess what was that decision making process like coming back here for the third time? It was an easy decision. You know, obviously I was in a good situation at Washington State at a place I really love and, and, and really liked being at. Uh, I had a lot of experience there, but um, you know, anytime you get a chance to come home and, and coach your alma mater, it's special. And so. Uh, obviously, getting an opportunity to work with Coach McGuire was, was something I've always wanted to do. Um, you know, my brother worked for him, you know, probably 20 years ago when he was coaching at Cedar Hill, and you know, has raved about how awesome he's been. You know, ever since then. And so, uh, to get a chance to coach for a guy like Coach McGuire uh, at a place, you know, like Texas Tech, which happened to be alma mater, was just uh, was an easy was an easy decision uh, for me and my family to make. I guess with a lot of new faces, obviously new faces for you, but I guess. How do you think things are melding together after two weeks of spring ball? I think we're coming along. Like I said, I, I, I knew you know this was going to be a process, and, uh, and we got to we got to build some continuity and some culture in that room as far as moving forward of how we want to do things here. And uh, like I said, I think we take a step forward every single day. I don't think we're anywhere near where we need to be uh, to be where we want to go in this program. But I definitely think the kids are buying in. I think they're working hard, and I think that we are moving forward. What's it like coaching Ty Buchanan for the second season yeah, after yeah. seeing him I, I think that's just this day and age in college football. You know, that'd be uh, the second time I've coached Ty at two different schools. You know, and I think that just happens. Uh, uh, you know, the way it has been. You know, the way uh, the landscape of college football is going right now, and I don't, I don't think that's going to be an uncommon practice as we move forward. Hey, Coach Jared Johnson, inside the Red Raiders. Caleb Rogers started several seasons at tackle, and now he's been moved inside. Where all has he? Uh, been playing, and then also, how's he looked uh, inside? He's just, uh, you know, he's a kid that, you know, as far as from a, a leadership standpoint, a, a bought-in standpoint, uh, how much he loves Texas Tech. I mean, he's he's been awesome. He comes out there every day with an unbelievable attitude to go work and compete, do whatever it takes for his team to win. And so, you know, our plan is to play him inside at one of the three positions, whether that be center or guard. Now, most of his reps have came at guard this spring. Uh, he can play center. He's taking reps at center as we've done our off-season work. But you know, just based on needs and and you know, just also trying to trying to figure out problem solving as far as things that might come up. You know, who's going to be, you know, who could possibly be a starting tackle, who could possibly be your first backup tackle, whatever it may be. Uh, he's had the opportunity to go bounce out there, and he has the ability to do those things and the mindset to do those things. So. Uh, it's really, uh, it's been really uh, valuable for us to have a guy that we can move in and fix problems and do those things. And I think for him and his development goals of playing at the next level, uh, being, you know, having the ability to be an all five position guy would be extremely valuable for him. And then some of the young guys who've been recruited out of high school in the last two classes, who are some of the guys who could possibly see playing time this this year? I think that's still up in the air right now. I've definitely been pleased with those two classes. I think uh, I think as you continue to gel and mold those guys together um, as we move forward in this whole thing, I think we really got a bright future with those kids. It wouldn't shock me right now. Um, there's three or four of them out there um, that are getting reps with the twos and, and you know probably will merit some one reps at some point. And some have been back with threes, twos, whatever, bouncing back and forth. So it's kind of been a shuffle so far, but it wouldn't shock me if you see a handful of any of those kids that are here on campus right now get playing time next year. Coach, what do you think of Davion Carter at this point? Like I've seen him at guard and at center. Yeah. Where do you think he's better at? And how he's, he, he's definitely going to be an inside guy. I mean, he's a kid that we've, you know, based on stature and, and you know, he's a really smart kid, uh, really, really sharp. Um, you know, we started him out first day at center. He did a good job. Um, I think it was going a little fast for him, so we try to slow it down and put it guard, take some of that off of him, you know, as far as uh, as we kind of ease him into this whole thing, you know, being new to the program. But I think he's definitely another kid that could play any one of those three inside positions. He's a really sharp kid, really smart, knows football. Um, but he's, he, he's, a, he's a talented kid. He's got a quick first step. Uh, you know, he can get out and run a little bit and everything. And so um, I definitely see him as the inside guy, and he'll he'll definitely be competing for one of those positions. I guess on the tackle at left tackle with Sterling Fulcher and Maurice Rodriguez. I guess what have you seen from those two, and I guess what's that happen? You know, Sterling's done a good job. Again, it's one of those things. You know, for those two kids, they're coming in, and this is, you know, we have experience at that position, but we don't have experience here at that position. So you know, even though they played a lot of games, uh, you know, it's one of those things they haven't played a lot of games here in this offense. So. Um, I thought Sterling's been doing a really good job of picking things up very fast, and so um, you know we'll just continue to keep you know working you know kind of working our program into those guys you know 
uh, and trying to help them come along and be the best football players they can be. And then another kid that we finally got back uh, the other day has really done some good stuff as a Dalton Miami kid as well. You work with some of the who's who's offensive coordinators at Texas Tech, obviously Leach, yeah. Kingsbury. What's it like uh, working with Kidley as the offensive coordinator? How is he different from us? It's awesome. You know, it's uh, you know, fortunately I got to work with Ben Arbuckle last year, who's going to be a, a hot name rising in this uh, profession as well. But you know, uh, Coach Kidley is Ben's mentor, and so uh, you know. He, it was unbelievable when this thing came open. It was one of those things, you know, he, he had just the greatest thing to say about Coach Kittley, and they're all true, you know. And I see a lot of Coach Kingsbury uh, in, in Coach Kittley, and you definitely, I started kind of watching too. You see some of the same mannerisms and same approach, and I think they're really sharp guys, and I, know, I think they, I mean, obviously they know ball very well and everything. So you know, if I were to compare any of them, I would compare, you know, like I said, I think Kittley is, is, you know, one of the closer things that I've worked with. Uh, who I've worked with as far as being close to what Coach Kingsbury was able to do. Coach Shondelin, Alpha Media. Which player has taken coaching from you and has shown the biggest growth in, in from what you want to see yeah. uh, this well, year? Well, the kid that I've been extremely fired up about and that I've probably, you know, latched onto and, and been really proud of is, is Sheridan Wilson. Um, you know, he's a kid that. You know, he signed with Texas Tech. Uh, he's a Red Raider. He loves Texas Tech, and it's one of those things. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities here up to this point. But you know, I mean, fr from day one since I've been here, you could have, you could have, you could have fooled me. I mean, I, I mean, he presented himself and carried himself and worked like he's been a five-year starter or a four-year starter here. And so, um, I'm really pleased with what he's doing and the leadership role he's taken on and how hard he works and the example he is. And he's kind of the epitome of what we're trying to build here. With that. Uh, we're coming back home with it again and seeing all the, the, the new stuff, the new toys, the yeah. new buildings. What is that for? What is that for you? And, and how do you see that helping just, you in the future? Well, I mean, I mean, it's just a, it's a lot of pride and, and just appreciation for you know all the powers that be that have stepped in to, to build this place into what it's become. You know, it's one of those things. You come here and. You know, get an opportunity. My brother played here before I did, so since 1993. I mean, I think there was a point where, from 93 to to 2000, or 93 to 97, saw every single home game in the stadium. Missed about you know five of them in 90, 90, uh, 98, and then pretty much caught all but one in 99 when I was getting recruited here. And then from 2000 to 2009, was here for every single one. You know, and so. To see this place grow into what it's becoming, it's just uh, really thankful and appreciative of, of everybody doing their part to, to get this program where it is right now. And, and moving forward, I think that you know a, a mixture of, of what and who Coach McGuire is and what he's building here. I mean, the sky's the limit for us. I mean, I don't think you know I think we have everything we could possibly ever need to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. And it's obviously coming together and continuing to um, you know build the program recruit to the program and continue to develop the program with coach McGuire's vision and there's no reason why we can't do that here so what's your favorite regular game memory favorite memory I got two of them obviously so you know it's kind of a 1a 1b it's, it's hard to top the Michael Crabtree 2008 play you know it was uh, that was a special moment I think for everybody you know and to get to be here and be a part of that was pretty special the, the 1b would be uh, Zach Thomas's interception against the Aggies. I, uh, you know, I was—I I think I was probably in the fifth, sixth grade at the time, and in those days, you know, I, I would walk away, around from where the parents got to sit on the visiting side, and I'd walk around to the tunnel, and right after the game, I would leap the fence, and my brother would take me in the locker room. I got to go in the locker room after every game, and so. I remember being in this corner of the end zone right where the old tunnel was and, and Zach picking the ball off and the place going crazy. It's, it's definitely one of the top moments. Nathan, you still have a guy last year. As you're kind of figuring out who's going to kind of assemble this new offensive line, is there one ingredient you're kind of looking for? Like, these are the five guys that work the best together? Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a work in progress. And I don't think you can ever really go into a season with just five guys. I think they're, you know, if you're in a really great situation, you'll have 10. Uh, you know, very rare does anybody in the country have 10 guys they think are, you know, high level or, you know, guys that, that can win a championship with. So if we can get that sweet spot of somewhere around eight guys that, you know, where you have a true backup center, a true backup guard, or a true backup tackle, where you have a rotator, and, 
and even if you're in a good situation, we're lucky enough to have a guy that you can go on a rotate to try to take some, you know, the early pounding and reps off of guys uh, in situational football where you can keep guys healthier longer throughout the year to keep them, you know, up, you know, through a 12, 13, 14 game season. Uh, you're very lucky to do that. But, you know, we're trying to develop, you know, who those eight guys are going to be, you know, probably is kind of the number I always look for. And so uh, we still got a long ways to go. And it'll be all the way up to mock week until we figure out who, that, who those guys are. Coach, Ty Kaplan, mm -hmm. Daily Tory Door. You come into a situation with the Joe Walker finalist uh, last year. Kind of talk about your relationship with Taj and the things you expect out of this season. Definitely makes my job easier. <laughs> you know, it's, I've been in times and places where, you know, you got to block a hole good enough for guys like me to run through to get some yards, you know, and it doesn't seem to be that way with Taj. But, you know, what what, what people don't, you know, you, you could talk about Taj's accolade and how well he runs the football, but, you know, what people need to be talking about, how great a kid that kid is. I mean, he's an unbelievable leader of this team, and he's an example of, you know, you know what what we want as Red Raiders, and, you know, he's one of the best blocking guys I've ever been a part of, and he's a, just a really good kid, very unselfish, and it's just been a real pleasure to be around him. Coach, I guess, what's the talent difference like in this room compared to last season? Got some special dudes. Um, we're really excited about the room. Um, you know, losing a guy like Baylor's always tough. Um, Baylor was a heck of a player, did a great job for our room. Um, but the combination of, of Mason with uh, Jalen Conyers, J.C. Miller, uh, Jason Llewellyn's coming in, doing really good things. And then a young guy like Trey Jackson. I mean, it's, it's a... Phenomenal room um, full of really talented guys, um, and, and and they're very. It's if you were around them, you'd realize like they're the people you want to be around. Um, that they're as good of people off the field as they are on the field. So it's it's a fun room to work with every day. And I guess what did the upgrade in title to run game coordinator mean to you this offseason? You know, it was a blessing. Um, I really really appreciated um, Coach McGuire. Um, you know, giving me that title. Um, not much changes. I mean, we, we were, me and Coach Kitley were working a lot hand in hand um, in the run game. And so, um, you know, just, just having that title is, um, I feel like it is a blessing. And um, I appreciate um, Coach McGuire, um, you know, doing that for me. Speaking of the run scheme, I guess, does anything change heading into this season? I know that you guys were majoring in like gap scheme, counter power. And I guess, do you want to open up like maybe some outside zone and inside zone a little more? Yeah, we're doing. Um, you know, I've, I, not just me. We we we're doing some studies on different um, different schemes that we can we can kind of open up with. Um, you know, what what fits our personnel. We never want to be tied down to just doing what we do because we've always done it that way. Um, you know, I feel like that's how coaches um, kind of get beat in the profession, right, is they just do what they do. But so we want to open, we want to open it up and, and find what, what do our guys do best um, as far as the O-line goes, as far as the um, running backs go, tight end. So um, we are looking at some different different things, but, you know, we're still going to run inside zone. We're still going to run um, counter. We're still going to run power. Um, so we're, we're going to hang our hat on those runs, but we'll, we'll open it up a little bit. Coach, uh, Kitley mentioned last year that you are one of his primary eyes in the sky on game day. What is that like? What are your duties exactly? And then what is it like the back and forth with you and Kitley, you know, uh, when the bullets are flying in the game? Yeah, so, um, you know, being up in the box and um, I'm, I'm the only on-field position coach um, up there. Um, and so, it, you know, he does, he asks me a lot of questions about just what the, what the front is. Um, you know, what, what's the box we're getting? Where can we attack them? Where's the, um, you know, where's the weakness in the defense? Um, so, so it is, um, it, it's, it's honestly fun. I mean, you get a bird's eye view um, and, and then he will come to me with some uh, just questions about, you know, what, what runs you like um, at, at times. So uh, we do, we work hand in hand. He's, he's, He's the best I've ever been around. Um, he's he's phenomenal and does a great job uh, leading our offense and our offensive staff. What does John Carlos Miller bring to the tight end? Um, freaky athleticism, I'll say that, um, and and a special person too. Um, I don't know if y'all have gotten to be around him much yet, but um, when you meet him, you're you're going to be a better person because of it. Um, he he's going to have a huge smile on his face and. Um, I tell him every day I'm, I'm just blessed to get to work with him because of what he brings to our room. 
Um, but as far as a football player, I mean, he's made some catches in these first eight practices that, um, I mean, just kind of leave our leave our eyes wide open. Um, we just haven't seen that. Um, and then obviously he can run, he can jump. I mean, he brings um, a, a level of kind of rawness um, coming from the FCS level um, that that a coach loves um, because it's almost like a a lump of clay and you can kind of mold it mold it how you want it and um, he has all the tools he has a work ethic and we're really excited about him. Coach I know Jalen Conyers isn't going through camp but I guess what have you seen maybe from him personality wise or leadership wise now that he's got? Yeah I, th I think Jalen has a, a pro mindset um, that that mindset that Coach McGuire is always talking about um, that I mean you're you're accountable for your future um, and so he, he's as, as little as he can do um, on the field right now, um, he's doing a heck of a lot behind the scenes. Um, meeting, meeting extra. Um, he's a film junkie. Um, loves the game. Um, so I, I mean, he, he's in every meeting. He, he's gonna be, he's gonna be a huge contribution to the offense. Um, you know, hate, always hate an injury like that. Um, but he, we're, we're not worried about him. He's played a lot of ball in his past and. Um, so we're, we're, we're not too worried. We know he'll be ready uh, when we put the pads on in August. I Coach, guess after, eight, after eight practices, who has met or exceeded, you know, you, with a whole brand, brand new room, who's met and or exceeded your expectations from, from when you were recruiting them to today? I mean, I would say I, I, can't, I can't not start out with, with Mason. Um, Mason has done a phenomenal job. Um, I've told him he, he's coming to work uh, like a man on a mission. I mean, he has um, really changed his mindset of, of that same pro mindset I talked about. Um, he's coming to work every day um, with a specific goal in mind, um, and he wants to help lead this team um, to, to win a lot of games in the fall and then wants to get to the next level, and he's, he's done a great job of doing that. Um, but then when you go to the younger side of things of guys that I recruited, um, Trey, Trey Jackson, man, he's, he's really fired up our offensive staff. Um, just his um, athleticism and, you know, being a, a guy that's a little undersized right now, hadn't been in a weight room a lot because he's always been in basketball. Um, you know, and he still looks like a basketball player, but, but he is not afraid to uh, stick his nose in it in the run game. Um, you know, he's, he's from a championship caliber program at, at uh, South Oak Cliff. So uh, he brings that, that pedigree to us and uh, we're really excited about him as well. Coach, I guess the last guy we haven't really talked about in your room is Jason Llewellyn. I guess, how, what did you see from him early and I guess what could you envision his role being come mm -hmm. fall? Jason's doing a really good job in the run game. Um, you can just tell he's been coached really well. Um, I think at the high school and college level, um, coming from Alito and then, and then um, you know, playing at OU, he's been coached really well, and he's a technician in the run game already. Um, so he, he's bringing a level of physicality. Um, he's a, a extremely highly intelligent um, football player. I mean, he knows where to be. He knows where grass is in the pass game. Um, so he has a little savviness to his route running ability. Um, so he, he's done a phenomenal job too. Um, I'm telling you, it's and it's it's a room full of really really good players and great people. Coach, with all these talented tight ends in your room now, is there, is there a good chance that we'll see a lot of 12 personnel, a lot of heavier personnel next year? Uh, I, I think there's a good chance of that. Um, you know, we're always going to work with, um, we're going to have the best players on the field. Um, and so uh, that's one thing I love about Coach Kitley and love about his offense is, um, you know, we're, we're not going to try and shove a square peg in a round hole. Um, you know, it, we're going to work with, uh, what we have, and, and we're going to get the best guys on the field. And um, so, if that's, you know, if that's going 12p, if that's going 21p, if that's going 10p, whatever it is, uh, however we can attack the defense the best, um, Coach Kitley's going to get that done, and we're, we're going to scheme it up and get the best players on the field. Coach, Go ahead. Coach, last season your tight end room produced some of the best blocking tight ends in the game. Do you feel like the room you have this year can match that? And if so. What are some of the players, that, and what are you seeing from them that's really bringing up their block? I do. I really do. Uh, Mason's um, become one of the better uh, blocking tight ends I've ever been around in my life. Um, you know, I'm as comfortable 
run the ball behind him as, as any offensive lineman. I mean, I'm, I'm fired up about the way he's doing it. He's doing it with a, just a level of physicality and nastiness that you don't see in a tight end much. You know, usually they're just wanting the ball, uh, which I get, uh, but he takes pride in the run game. And then, um, you know, JC's coming in and he is a physical kid. Um, you know, they met on a, on a him and one of our bigger ends met on a split zone the other day and it was just a collision. Um, and it's just two guys that are competing and, um, you know, just trying to, to improve their game. But it's, it's really guys that don't mind getting dirty um, and don't mind that, that aspect of football. And so it's fun to work with. Coach Mason's missed some games the last couple of seasons due to injury. Um, I know he's been out there for spring, but where is he at health-wise? And is that a concern in terms of his availability moving forward? He's 100%. Um, you know, we, we held him out, actually. Um, I'm sure you all remember. We, well, he was in a yellow jersey last spring, um, just trying to take care of his body and, and all that. Um, but he is he hadn't missed a rep the entire spring. Um, like I said, he, he's a man on a mission right now. Um, he doesn't want to miss a rep. Um, he, if, 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 I, if I pull him, he, he's mad. He wants to get back in the game. Um, and so, you know, we feel great about where he's at. Um, body weight wise, he's, he's at, a, at a weight that he feels really good, feels strong, uh, but he's still able to run well. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're not worried at all. Um, you know, we, we have a great tight end room, so um, it, it wouldn't be a concern if we need to put someone else. I mean, they're all going to play. Um, but but that is something that I'm actually excited about. It's just the health of the health of Mason right now. What's his weight? He's he's at 267 right now, 267, and he's uh, he he doesn't run like it though. He he's he's moving really really well right now. The tight end room has always been a, a family, and your family's mm -hmm. adopted all of them. How does your daughter feel about having new big brothers? She absolutely loves them. Uh, they actually came over to my house for. Uh, Easter, um, we, we fed them Rudy's barbecue and my wife cooked the sides and uh, they did the Easter egg hunt. They, they wanted to, to hide the Easter eggs for her. Uh, and so we had a lot of fun. Um, it is, like you said, it's a family. Um, I, I love those guys, um, I mean, more than I could even describe. Um, and, and I hope that they, can, they, they feel comfortable with me in that same way. Um, and I, th I think when you build that relationship with a, with a player and a coach, you know, um, you'll do anything for each other. Um, and so that's the environment that, that Coach McGuire's built as a, as a team. Um, but that's also the, the environment I want in, in our tight end room as well. Coach, going off of that environment, you talked about Mason stepping up, kind of being the leader and the new guys coming in. How's it been to watch everyone gel, become family, and then also the younger guys looking up to Mason? Mason, if, if you know him, he's a quieter guy, um, and so he's always in the, the first two years he didn't didn't speak up a lot, didn't really want that leadership role, and uh, like I said, that mentality's flipped, and he he's embracing the leadership role, um, and, and those guys look at him and look at how he uh, prepares for work every day, how he prepares for practice. Um, you know, I'm uh, around the the weight room so I'm around the training room every morning and he's the first one in there him and Taj um, and so he takes care of his body like a pro um, and, and those guys see that and, and they they want to follow that because they see the success he's having on the field um, and so they're like well if he's doing if that's how he's doing it I want to do it um, so I know Trey um, and, and JC as well even though JC's an older guy um, they're both uh, really following in his footsteps and um, trying to embrace his leadership role. Coach, going back, to, going back to Baylor from earlier, have you been involved at all during his draft process? And if so, kind of just talking through what you guys have talked about, maybe some advice you've given to him? Yeah, so, um, you know, I've scouts call me about him a lot, and, and I just talk about um, what a phenomenal person he is, but then also what the, the different aspects he can give, bring to an NFL team. Uh, and I really do. I think he can be a, a great third tight end for someone. Um, help with special teams, and, and he's just an all-around um, good play. He can help you in the pass game and the run game. He's an all-around guy. Um, he actually, he just got married um, right before the week before Pro Day, uh, or the, the Big 12 Pro Day. Um, and so um, we were, I, I called him after his wedding because I didn't get to go, it was on a practice day. Uh, so I called him and, and talked to him that day, and he was, he was excited about Pro Day and 
Uh, I know he didn't get to, uh, he had a little nagging hip, so he didn't get to run, uh, but he tested really well in the jumps. Um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I wish the best for him. Um, he'll always be part of the family.